Welcome to another episode of Bosses in Action. And today, Trenton and I have our friend Don Cordner out of Portland, Oregon. She also covers like the southern part of Washington. Uh, she's also known as a lady boss. So welcome, Don. We appreciate having you here. Thanks for having me. And let's let's talk about follow-up boss because you've been using them for a while now, but yes. you you use it slightly differently. And that's what I love about follow-up boss. Everyone can use it so differently and still have success with it. Yes. Let's yes. start with just the daily processes inside a follow-up boss so that people can better understand how they should start or just a different option. Yeah. And I think too, I want to say is that, you know, our account, we're in a constant state of flux, right? Because there is always somebody doing it better. And it's okay. You can still have your core daily processes, even while you're in a state of flux, mm, right? Yeah. While you're updating, you know, the campaigns or the stages or the smart list, those types of things. There, there are still things to do and hunt for on a daily basis. That's true. So. I think, Don, um, that's a really good point, actually. A lot of people think that they have to have it all ready to go before they get started. And I think the key is to get started and figure it out along the way. So, and it'll right. change. You'll figure it out and it'll change, you know? So um, there were things that I was, I was hoping we wouldn't be in a state of flux for today, but I think it actually is going to help send a bigger message. Right. So yes. um, do you want me to screen share? Yeah. You know what? That actually would help a lot. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were going to either way, but screen sharing would at least help us understand the processes. Uh, a lot of us are visual. Yeah. And I know all of us are waiting to hear Trenton say right off the bat. So maybe we should start off with that, Trenton. I've already said it today, though. Oh, shit. I missed it. Okay. Don, sorry. Go ahead. And I'm not blurred. Sorry. Take all the screenshots you can if you want to call my people. Just kidding. I'm calling <laughs> Bet Weeper in about 10 minutes. So I think, you know, one it seems so elementary, but something that is so critical is to make sure that when you log on, that you're seeing exactly what you need to see, that your columns have been adjusted and that these adjustments are carried over for every smart list that you have, right? For instance, I'm a Ylopo stars user. I don't need to see the stars link here on the first page. Oh, okay. Right. Got so what I'm focused on is their most recent activity, what they viewed, the average price point, AI communications, right? So this, this flows. Ooh, I like that. So when I get in every day, the first thing I do is make sure that I'm searching this last activity from most recent. Is that how you typically, well, hold on. Where, where does most of your business come from right now? Is it online? Is it referrals? It's online. online. Yeah. Okay. So since online. it's online, the first thing you're looking for is whether or not they were on your website recently. So this is why you go there first. Correct. Got it. And this will show us what they viewed, how many they viewed, right? So these columns were a game changer. It was Gabe that years ago got into my, Gabe Cordova got into my account and saw that I had just the default columns. And so, if any of you have been scolded by Gabe. So <laughs> take, me through, take me through the columns. You're talking about name, stage, yeah. created. Okay, got it. Perfect. Yeah. Last activity, properties viewed. Last communication. Okay. So now... Yeah. The very first thing you do when you jump in, you click on last activity and you start from the person that just logged on most recently. Is that, I, is that I go what to, happened? Yep. I go to all people and click on last activity. Got it. So then take me through the conversation. I know this isn't part of it, but now I want to know, like, if you're going to start with Bet Weaver and you click on Bet, it's like, what is the conversation like? Because I know that some agents are like, well, I don't know how to approach the call. They just visited our website. They're going to feel like I'm stalking them. What does this look like? So great timing for that question, actually, because we recently had 
25,000 people that were no longer getting listing alerts okay. re-imported and set up on listing alerts. So we oh, had wow. over a thousand people hit our site okay. in the last week from these revived listing alerts. Okay. And I can go into this later inboxes, but we now have an inbox set up. So our ISA, and this yeah. is important, this is to your question, because this is a, a role play that we've had to do recently. Um, our ISA is calling from our, our inbox number. All right, hold on. What, what do you mean by inbox number? What is that? So inbox, we set up an inbox here. Okay. For everybody on the team. And I'll show you how it's set up here. Got it. And they have that. So everyone shares this inbox and shares the phone number. Correct. And we set it up so that our ISA, when she calls out, this is the number that's displayed, the inbox number. Got She's it. not leaving voicemails. So if she calls and doesn't get them, but you know the instinct when you receive a missed call from a number you don't know, you call it back. Of course. So to solve that problem, we created this number so that people are calling that number back. It rings the entire team. That's perfect. So when they call back, this is your entire ISA team. Are any agents involved in this? Because I do see your name on there as well. Yeah, so these are agents. This is okay. the ISA. The ISA doesn't get the callback anymore. It just goes straight to our agents. So they know, and they all have they all have their phones turned on so that they understand that the follow-up boss, uh, follow-up boss name appears like a hey, follow-up boss. Right? But They're here's what's interesting. It doesn't when people call an inbox number unless it's assigned to them and they're the only one in the inbox. Ah, so they put this number in their phone and this is where that, that scripting comes into play, right? Because everybody was so excited. We, we were solving a problem. We realized last month there were 97 callbacks to the ISA that got missed. Damn. That's a lot of inbound that's activity that we missed, right? Yeah, so that's now, a ton. Who got fired? Oh, right. huh? I said, what? who got fired? But I was just joking. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Give me two uh, days. <laughs> so we set up this number. Everybody's so excited. They plug it into their phone. It says ISA callback. That's the contact in their phone. Here's the rub. When they call back, you don't know who it is. And they don't always know necessarily who they're calling back. Okay. Well, because the ISA's call list is based on last activity, mm -hmm. whoever's calling has been on our website in the last 48 hours. So when they call, what I say is, oh, hi, this is Dawn. I'm a local realtor. My client care manager was reaching out to you because we saw that you had indicated on our website that you were looking to buy or sell real estate, but it didn't tell us whether you were looking to buy or sell. It's a Barry Jenkins script that I stole. By it's, a, it's a very good script. Yeah. Very yes. easy, soft. Got it. Yes. And just get them talking. Um, I had one gentleman tell me, oh, I already, I bought a house about a year and a half ago. Uh, I got the email. I was just curious. Oh, that's great. Where did you buy he tells me where he bought. Well, you know, given that we're in a very controversial market right now, if you'd be interested, I'd be happy to send you an equity report, either monthly or quarterly, whichever you prefer, free of charge, so that you can keep track of your own potential wealth that you're building in your home as we mm -hmm. navigate the controversial market. Controversial, people have been very um, receptive to that word because it's not giving validity to all of the clickbait that's out there, but it could be giving validity to it if that's where they're at. Makes sense. I like this. This is a cool, this is a cool way to approach this. I like this. And I think, I don't think that a lot of people are actually using the inbox this way. So I love the call, call rounding back. Well, correct. And a week ago, I didn't know I could change what the outbound phone number was for my ISA. You know, she's not calling from her personal phone number, her personal FUB number. 
it's showing that it's outbound from here. And then what it allows me to do also phase two of, of daily is I go into the call log and I look for inbound calls. And we had a boatload of them. She's been going today, but I'll look for inbound calls. Right, to see if my teams picked them up, if they claimed the lead, what the disposition was. Did we get them set up on an equity report like they asked? I or like did this. So in this feature, you guys, even beyond going through ISA calls, I use this and I'll listen to a handful of my agents calls just to help train them up and vice versa. I'll listen to my own calls and realize that I say, um, and talk too much. Right. Do you, in this process, do you also, do you also have your ISA text them so that they text back that same number or are we just talking about calling? She, she calls the only time she's texting right now is um, appointment confirmations. So kind of after she's had a discussion and everything like that. Yeah. I like that. All right. So then let's go back to this screen where we're mm -hmm. now last activity as they're coming through. So that's cool. How do you use properties views property saved? How do you use that feature? So with properties viewed and property saved, I will look at their most recent um, looks and saves, and then I will generate a push listing back to them with four or five homes, including the two that I saw that they looked at over and over and over again. <laughs> and just let them know that I saw those homes, I was thinking of them and I wanted to make sure I was on the right track. Now I know mm -hmm. I'm on the right track because I saw that they looked at that house and shared it six times and. Don, out of everything here, what to you is the most important thing that stands out? Like what is the one thing you look at that you just, that you base conversations on or reasons to call? It's the last activity. So last activity first then. Yep. And then does it go progressive here? Is that why they're ordered in this call in this way for the columns? Does it go last activity, properties views, properties saved, uh, and then it keeps going there? Or do you use the section over at the top with the lists, which is active clients, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> yeah, so replies. these are... The, and these are these are what are in flux right now, but these are to make it easy for us for us as agents to find that low hanging fruit and keep track of who we're working with. If you're building any type of pipeline, it's difficult, right, to mm -hmm. remember everybody who needs everything. But that's the goal, especially when you have deals in escrow. So these are our smart lists currently to keep us. So when you go, when you go back to the hot, 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 hot. Yep. You should name that Triple H. That would be that would be funny and awesome. <laughs> Triple H. Hot, hot, hot. Um, when you go to this, do you just go straight down, or do you also click on last activity first and then go backwards? Is that, or is it already set up in, instantly that way? Yeah, no, so on mine right now, I'm showing pond leads. If this were just to be for an agent, mm -hmm. right, it would be Dominique, a much smaller list. Oh, got it, got it. Right. So, but if you want to yeah. use it for a prospecting list, you can then go to, you know, view all ponds. And I would do the same thing. I would sort my last activity, most recent to oldest, call through that list in the ponds and claim whoever I connect with in a positive way. Okay, so then let's say you you hit up Allison uh, Heenan. Mm -hmm. Let's say you, you hit her up to open house 
And then you finish talking to her. Take me through the process of setting it up for a follow-up because I also think that's where agents fail. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is, is making sure that you change it to the appropriate stage. If things are staged correctly, then it's going to show up in your follow-up list automatically, those smart lists that we have up at the top mm. um, from the main screen. Yeah. So th the biggest thing is, is stage. And as far as tasks go, we only use tasks because we have the smart lists. We only use tasks for things like Allison needs a net sheet by 2 p.m. on Thursday kind of thing. Then I would set that up as a task internally. I like that. Do you have anything that's set up that's automated so that it just happens as you're clicking it, like one process then links another process that happens on its own? Yeah. So one of my favorite automations, there's so many set up in here. Um, but one of my favorite automations is we have a do not contact pond. And when oh. you have somebody connected to an agent connected to a pond, they then begin to get all of the alerts and everything for that pond. Well, mm -hmm. I um, began using, um, and I'm still using Amplified Solutions to help basically reconstruct and help set up automations. And, and one of them that they set up was where once a, a lead is staged, do not contact, it'll automatically be unsubscribed, put into the do not contact pond, but I don't have to have all of my agents be a part of that pond. So uh -huh. I and the ISA manage that pond. If somebody happens to come back or send an email or, or inquire, right, then we can revive it. But the agents, our agents aren't getting inundated every time something's added to that pond or that's smart app. and then how, do, how is that then how do you remove somebody from that pond because there, is there still automation happening outside of the call and the texting like email and listing alerts it just depends on their level of uh i'm not interested right so for instance if somebody tells ai to stop that doesn't mean you're dead to me. Don't ever talk to me again. Don't send me anything. I'm never going to buy a house. That means they don't want to text with, with Raya or whoever, whatever your AI platform is, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're very careful to acknowledge when people unsubscribe from something. That doesn't mean a complete wipeout. Got it. I like that. So, so then you're not removing people from your database that don't seem to be interested right now. No. All right. Good. I, I do the same thing. So that's what I was asking. I love that. Yeah. No. And and in within do not contact, I will go in once a week and make sure that what they're getting is in or not getting is in context with the conversation, right? It takes you a while of hearing no and I'm not interested and don't call me to understand that sometimes it's it's meeting people where they are in that moment. And it doesn't mean that they're not they're not willing to talk to you at all. Yeah, I like that. Can you take me through some of your nurturing that you do for like a longer term client or a customer? Because these are all See, what I'm taking, everyone listening in is I'm, I'm taking them through your SOPs so people can mm -hmm. see how they function for, for different pieces. Yeah. So we've got, we have several drips that have been put into the system over the years and, and different ones resonate with different agents, right? Because that's, that's important. The way you're saying it, it really matters most if that's how you're going to say it when you're on the phone with them or when you're Very in front true. of them, right? So I, I 
try really hard not to be a one trick pony for everybody on the team and for every client in the database, because we all communicate differently. Um, yeah, just in ways true. that I communicate very differently. <laughs> so, <laughs> not for everybody, but it works. It's okay. It's good. So uh -huh. we have our, our email, you know, our, our email drips in the system. Um, but again, that long-term follow-up is based on if somebody says, for instance, I won't be ready for a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. The instinct is to set a task. I will call them one year from today. I will call them March 15th on 2024. No. The conversation for that is, that's great. I totally understand and I applaud you for planning. It's such a big decision, especially with the controversy in our market right now. Because right now we're hearing rates. We're hearing prices are going to drop. We're hearing prices are going to go up. So the key is then letting them know, right? Getting their permission. I hear you. You're not going to be ready to buy for a year. But know that we're going to be reaching out to you on a monthly basis just to make sure that your situation hasn't changed and that we don't drop the ball. Do you get any pushback from that from them if they say I've that never had anybody year? say no. Don't call me for a year. You know, they might say you know, can we do once a quarter or but it's always I've never had anybody hang up on me or unsubscribe or not want to talk to me again because I let them know ahead of time. I suppose that also it's confirms awesome. their intent as well. Um, Correct. You know, if, they, if they were very adamant about not wanting to be contacted, then you could probably make that assumption that maybe that they weren't, you know, actually serious about purchasing in a year. But as long as they're open and willing, you know, mm -hmm. that obviously shows that they have an intent to purchase or sell. Yeah. You know, I, I think right there with, I'm just taking notes. When you're, when you're letting them know that I think the key to your success with that is, and our success, Trenton, is I liked your question. You get any pushback. I think it's it's the way we're asking them and the way we're letting them know. It's like saying, hey, awesome, congrats a year. Well, besides asking what's happening in a year, uh, I we always say, well, what we'll do then, just for the next few months, as you get closer, We'll be sending you some market stats and some local real estate news. This way, at least you stay up to date as to what's happening. And then you're not just saying, oh, we'll, stay in, we'll stay in touch or we'll, we'll touch base. It's so unclear because when you say that to them, it, it could mean anything. It's like, oh, spam. But if you're telling them what you're sending them, then they have no, it's like no issue. It's very clear what they're going to get. So yeah. um, that for, just for people listening in. Is this uh, and their name? Oh, yeah, go ahead. George has a question. Do you have do you have to get permission from the Wailopo lead to include them on your newsletter mail list? Trenton, do you know the answer to that one? Or Don? You know, I mean, I would assume that they're opting in when they yeah. give you your information. Um, and so that would be that would be something that you'd probably include in like your little disclaimer or privacy policy when someone registers for a lead, whether it be on Facebook or through YLOPO or any of that nature. Um, Cause they're kind of basically opting in by giving you that information, especially if you give like a little uh, like a confirmation thing as well. So um, it could be like a little two-step um, input in information that can help with that. And then always include the, the unsubscribe at the end or if they would like to opt out at that point in time, they can yeah. do that. Too. Yeah, I like that. And plus that's part of the value you're giving, George. So that makes sense. So, all right, sorry, Don, go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. I don't even remember what I was going to say. So <laughs> <laughs> you suck, Trenton. I'll just blame Trenton. <laughs> it's your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> I mean, my answer is just, they've opted into our ecosystem particularly if they're if they're looking at the website. Um, I've said this a thousand times, but if if somebody's playing with my toy, I'm gonna try to talk to them. Right? Like what if, yeah, of course. 
what if I can show them how to play with my toy better? You know, show them how to save properties, show them how to search. Let them know that we're a part of four MLSs that feed into this. Um, how important is it for you to get a hold of them quickly? Is it something because you know that a lot of these Google and Facebook lead ads are not purchasing anytime soon? Yeah. So, how important is that first communication quickly? Does it matter to you or no? You know, that, that's why I have the ISA in place. Um, it really, again, just depends on, on their activity. I think we've all fallen into the, we've clicked on something on Facebook or online at 11 o'clock at night or one in the morning when we've got insomnia and then all of a sudden it starts. Um, I'm more interested in the people that are raising their hand, the people that are having the most activity and getting out to those people, you know, of course, our ISA is calling all the new leads right away repeatedly, but getting information out to them that they will find valuable. Okay. I Whether like that. that's, you know, marketing stats or pushing listings based on what they were initially seeing. Thanks, Don. Which is so why you have such a high focus on the activity level of when someone's on your website. Yeah. Which is why you're initiating those call lists. Yeah. 